Well, I'm ready to start making the form for the uh, stem laminations for the rails. We've got a large sheet of uh, MDF here. There's just a few steps I need to do to uh, this piece before I start cutting the, the arcs. And uh, I'll show you how I do that. It's, it's, not, it's not magic. First, I scribe a line three and a half inches from the edge. And I mark down 22 and three quarters of an inch. This will be the outside diameter of the bending form. After I transfer the line to the other side, I take a straight edge and mark all the way across. This will help me find my center point to draw the arc. And then take a ruler and measure in 22 and 3 quarters. Again, this will give me the outside of the arc that I'm looking for in the bending form. going to measure in another three inches. This will also help me align the pieces further on when I have cut them out. I hammer a nail into my center point and then taking a trammel I make the first mark at 22 and 3 quarter. Then move the nail in three inches. This will give me an inside dimension of 19 and three quarters, giving me a three inch thickness on the bending form. All right, well, I've got my first piece of the template laid out. What I need to do first is rough cut the outside edge of this with the jigsaw. Then I'll go back and smooth that all out. I want to keep about a sixteenth of an inch or so outside that line. Also, when cutting up the up, it's always a good idea to use a dust mask. I've also got the air scrubber going, so. See, I've, I've got my circle cutting jig that I used before to cut the tabletop mounted on this. I'm basically going to do the same operation. I've got a hole drilled here with a screw in it. I'm just going to perf make this perfectly round on the edges. This edge perfectly round. I'm going to use this as the outside edge of my bending form. This is going to again form the skirt underneath. What I need to do now is I need to rough cut underneath all this. I want to cut it almost at the line, just a little bit inside. Uh, I'm more concerned about the outside. But I'm going to use this as a template to go down the line. I need now that I've got this perfectly round on the outside, what I want to do is I want to rough cut this all the way along the inside, and this is again going to be the first part of my form. I'm just going to cut that with the jigsaw.
got this uh, template cut out, all you need to do is just start making more of them. I need a total of six. Uh, I'm just marking out the edges here. This can just be rough because I'm going to use this as the master and uh, pattern around all the other ones with this piece. So just mark this all out. Inside, all the way around. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. On the inside here, it doesn't really matter much. But on the outside, I need to make sure I stay at least a sixteenth of an inch or so outside that. So when I do pattern around these, I'm going to get a, a nice consistent uh, thickness when I stack them up. So, All right, well, I've got the uh, six pieces cut out to, to make my bending jig. This is the first one I cut again. I'll, I'll trim all the other ones to the exact dimensions of this outside one with the uh, pattern routing bit. I also want to talk about, again about MDS. After I cut all this out, you know, I was using a, a, an air filter and my dust mask. I've got a door and a window open for cross ventilation. This is, this is the aftermath of all that. As you can see, there's a lot of dust all over the floor. There's a fine coating of dust over everything in the shop. Um, I know we love to talk about eye safety and, and safety for your fingers and hands and such, but you know, safety is also very important for your lungs. Please make sure you wear a dust mask when you do this and have some kind of filtration or uh, cross ventilation going on. Very, very messy business, MDF. All right, as you can see, I've taken the, the template, which is the first piece I cut with the perfect round edge. I've got one of the rough cut pieces of MDF underneath it. I've glued and screwed it together, and I will take it over to the router and uh, use a pattern routing bit and cut that so it's exactly the same size as this. Called the pattern bit, the uh, router, is the top mounted bit, top bearing mounted bit. I'm going to do again, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to trim it all the way along so the bottom piece is exactly the same as the uh, top piece. Again, MDF very messy. Uh, I've got as much dust collection as I think I need, so hopefully I'll just... I'm looking for. Uh, I'll just continue to do this until I get all six strips glued together and uh pattern routing on the form. I've got a nice flat face here. I'm going to cover this up with packing tape so glue doesn't stick to it. And now uh, I'm going to let this sit overnight just to make sure the glue is fully cured. And I've got a few screws in it. But uh, tomorrow I'll continue on with this and uh, start the laminations. I'm ready to start cutting the uh, strips for the bent laminations. I've got a piece of walnut. It's Eight quarter well, it's about one and seven eighths. Uh, it's surface four sides, it's straight, it's flat. I've also got a grease saw fence up against my bandsaw uh, fence. I've got a fresh blade. I spent some time tuning up my bandsaw to make sure all the roller bearings and everything is straight and true. Uh, I've got a feather board, I've got a push stick, 
I'm also done a thickness plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off uh, a slice of this board. Then I'm going to take what's remaining. I'm going to put it in here and then flatten the side again to go up against here. And then I'm going to continue to cut this. So uh, with any luck, I'll be able to yield 12 uh, 1 8 inch strips to, to, to make my, my land. <laughs> I've got all the boards cut for the uh, the rail that's going to be laminated. Um, I, I, I came out about an eighth of an inch short from where I need to be, so uh, each rail is only going to be about five eighths of an inch, uh, which is fine. I was hoping for three quarters, but uh, it's really just to hide all the things that come up underneath. But you see, these joints fit real nice and tight, so. Um, I'm ready to start uh, the lamination process. Well, I'm ready to start the bent lamination process. I've got my boards laid out. I've got a center line marked on the board, center line marked on the jig. I've also got the jig glued with a piece of masonite. I covered everything with packing tape and a light layer of wax. Um, I've also got some calls. I've got my clamps ready, uh, roller, some, some gloves. I'm also going to be using uh, polyurethane glue. The reason I'm using polyurethane is uh, it's, it's stiffer than PVA glue and it'll help prevent the uh, pieces from stretching once the, once the glue is cured. So uh, with all that said, I'm, I'm ready to start doing this. One nice thing about the polyurethane wood glue, it has a very long open time, about 30 minutes. I'm going to be putting uh, glue on both sides, just a nice, thin, even layer. up the center mark, make sure the boards are as straight as I can get them, and just continue the process. Now that I've got all the boards clamped up, I'm going to take these, put them against the jig, the outside facing up, mark my center line, put them down square on the jig, I've also got another piece of masonite again with packing tape and a little bit of wax on it. And that's going to go on the outside of this. I'll apply the first clamp. I want to make sure that these are as flat as possible. After that, up against this table and lined on the center. I've also got some clamping calls. These will help distribute the pressure on the outside. Right in the 
center. Tighten that down. Make sure all the joints close up real nice. Alright, I just need to go around the rest of it to do that. on here. Uh, one of the other things with polyurethane glue, you can see this foam in here. I didn't even apply water to this. Uh, it's just very humid today and uh, polyurethane glue is reacting with it. I had a couple boards slide on here. Um, I'm really going for a three and three quarters finished width. So I, I've done this maybe a dozen times. No matter what I do, a couple boards seem to slide. So I always make it a, a, a board a lot bigger than it needs to be. So. Um, manufacturer says this will be cured in four hours. I, I'm not going to let it go just four hours. I'm going to let it go a full 24 hours. So I'm going to let this cook for a while. I'm going to uh, do the next one tomorrow. And then I'll have two rails ready to be uh, finished. Well, I've got the laminations off the form. I let them both sit for a day in the, in the clamps. Uh, it took almost as long to get the clamps off and put away as it did to uh, bend these up. Uh, there was some slight spring back, about an eighth of an inch on each side, and I can live with that. I can, they're still flexible enough where I can pinch them together just a little bit on the ends to get a nice round uh, circle out of them. I'm very happy with the way these came out. I just need to, to, to cut these out, get them nice and flat on both sides. I'm looking for about three and three quarters of an inch yield. Maybe a little less. Uh, I've got to order the slides and see exact what the, what the exact measurements are of those. Uh, these are going to be hiding that and the support system underneath. So again, these came out very well. <laughs>